anyone else comes, but uh, we'll have a good session in any case. So uh, welcome. Um, I'm uh, Nathaniel Osgood. I'm the, uh, the, the lead for this uh, presentation. Um, this is a presentation um, uh, co-created with um, my colleague Mohammed Hashemian, who had hoped to be here because of a, a big deadline associated with a very large-scale study launch. Um, is unfortunately not not able to be here in person. He is available for questions, um, and I may reach out to him to address uh, questions that that might come up uh, from uh, the audience here. Um, so uh, today's uh, focus, during the next three hours, I'm going to be talking about researching human behavior uh, using smartphones and wearables. Um, and I'm going to do so in a way that invites uh, uh, participant uh, involvement in, a, in an ongoing way. And I'm also going to approach it in a sort of spiral fashion where I talk about um, some uh, bigger, uh, higher level uh, overviews and points at first. And then I get down to some more nitty gritty specifics about particular elements of, of the system um, that we're going to be using and how they apply within this area. So um, in order to uh, get us going, I uh, would actually like uh, those who are here to follow uh, the following steps, okay? Um, and uh, my intention was to, to launch into this right now, but uh, just to allow a few more people to come in here, um, which, which I think are due, I'm going to uh, come back to this slide in a few minutes um, so that um, anyone who's uh, going to be with us through the session will have recourse to this and we don't have to, to wait for them. So I'll start by asking, uh, I'll start by providing here a, a brief um, introduction to the EFCA system that we built for, um, uh, for researching uh, human health behavior using smartphones and wearables. So, um, Ethica software, which is designed to allow researchers, health system practitioners, um, other frontline health workers, to collect and analyze, visualize uh, data on human behaviors, attitudes, beliefs, and exposures using uh, three, any of three interfaces, um, uh, smartphones, uh, wearable technologies, and web for the data collection. Okay. Um, traditionally, it's been focused on smartphones, but within the past year, there's been a big push to have Ethica be available via web without requiring a smartphone app and to uh, support a wide variety of, of uh, wearable technologies, uh, such as through the Google uh, Fit system. Ethica is a system which has been used worldwide um, for more than 100 studies. Um, with more than 10,000 participants and um, a wide variety of universities across the world, uh, including particularly large numbers in US, Canada, in Australia, and now in, in Europe. And it is available as a system in, in nine languages, um, but there are particular study deployments outside of those nine languages, such, uh, for example, in Bengali recently, even though they don't have a the system menus and, and um, uh, help and so on in, uh, in Bengali, the, um, the interface, the surveys, uh, buttons, et cetera, are. So I want to provide here a, a, a glimpse of Ethica from the very highest level so that we can kind of navigate within it um, in an interactive way in just a few minutes, okay? Um, we're then going to go in particular components. So Ethica broadly is a system that provides um, several key components uh, for interaction with different types of users. Um, typically, a study will start with a, uh, a researcher um, who, who interacts with the researcher dashboard. It's a, it's a visual uh, web-based um, interface. Uh, in order to define a study. And um, defining a study involves, as we'll see shortly in a hands-on way, a set of particular um, activities to be undertaken. Specification, and I use that word advisedly, not programming, but specification in a graphical fashion of data sources, of surveys, uh, and other activities to be undertaken, say time use tracking, or components associated with cognitive tasks, 
um, other types of elements. And uh, by specifying the study, um, uh, the researcher uh, essentially is articulating a design for the study, which can then be uh, placed onto smartphones in a, in a highly custom way, in a way that each study will differ from, its, uh, from the others in terms of the surveys, the data sources, and the activities. But whatever their design is, it will be, uh, it'll be able to um, be, uh, be used by participants through uh, smartphones, Android and iOS are both supported, through web-based apps, and what's not shown here but really should be uh, provided with another line is via wearables. Okay? Um, so uh, a study will be placed, will be pushed down uh, to, to devices like uh, web-based browsers, Android, and it will interact with the participant to collect data. That data will be brought back to the researcher dashboard. Um, in a fashion which then allows the researcher to browse the data that's collected, to refine aspects of the study that, that have been um, specified, and to uh, monitor adherence over time, uh, and to uh, perform types of analysis and visualization. Okay? Um, so I'm going to briefly touch on different elements of this, bearing in mind that on the one hand, there's this interface aimed at research teams, uh, aimed at those researchers up there, um, but are, which are administrators more broadly, and then a, a rather different interface, which is aimed at, at participants down here. Okay? Um, and we'll be seeing both those interfaces in spades over the next uh, three hours. Okay, um, so... Um, uh, one of the components that we emphasized for studies uh, was data sources. Data sources within Ethica um, are varied. Um, there are dozens of them that can be specified for a given study as, as to allow data collection for that particular type of resource. But broadly speaking, they can be divided into about five or six different categories. Location data physical activity related data, contact network tracing data, digital footprint data. This includes things like app use, screen time, incoming calls, outgoing calls, text messages received. Environmental data, this is data on the physical environment that surrounds us, and wearable devices. Okay, um, so these are data sources that can be configured here for a given study. And different studies will make very different use of subsets of these. So a study uh, seeking to understand the spread of a communicable disease might place uh, a, a prime emphasis on physical, uh, excuse me, on, on contact network data, but might also be interested in location data. Um, maybe to discover if people are engaged in care-seeking behavior, or maybe to know if people are co-located in a crowded environment. With, with others who happen not to be part of the study. Uh, by contrast, studies interested in um, physical activity might collect physical activity data from the phone, but from wearables as well, and perhaps aspects of the environment which uh, might shape that physical activity. So, so those are the, the data sources. Now, in terms of participant interaction, um, the data sources are collected in the background. Um, so things like app use, um, excuse me, uh, screen, uh, the screen time, their text messages, um, accelerometry or pedometry data, step counts over time, those are collected in the background. Um, participants don't have to be aware of it. Um, by contrast, there's a set of so-called activities, which include surveys uh, and others, such as cognitive tasks, which specifically involve the participants. They involve the participant in a conscious way, uh, interacting with those surveys, or sometimes allowing them to expire. Um, surveys can be used in a very rich ways to capture self-reported data uh, from the participant. Things like cognitive tasks um, uh, can be asked uh, after the participant has joined and after baseline questions have been asked. Uh, similarly, time use data or data for expense tracking or nutritional intake 
can be asked uh, using certain activities. Okay, and um, it uh, it bears noting that these activities can make use of the unique features of smartphones, and I'll just mention a couple here. Okay, one thing is they can uh, make use of uh, multimedia input. Right, they can. Uh, they can allow you to take a photo of what you're reading instead of just reporting it. Take a photo to show the fact you're actually taking your medication right now, for example. Um, uh, they might also record audio, which would better understand um, uh, a participant who is older and, and can't type that well, or better understand uh, a health complaint, like a cough or wheeze um, that a person is suffering, um, and, and interpret it. Um, they can capture video. Um, they can also show those things as part of the survey. They, in short, they can take advantage of a smartphone interface, but more than that, they can be triggered by certain contexts as discovered by the sensors. So they can be triggered when I'm in proximity with another study participant, when I'm near my study of my service dog, when I'm at home within a certain geofence area, when I'm presenting for care. So surveys and data sources kind of complement each other, and one can, can enhance the other. Okay? Um, uh, the surveys can enhance the interpretation of the automatically collected data source, and the automatically data collected data source could enhance the, lower the burden of surveys by automatically collecting certain information that people would have to report where they are, who they're with, what sort of physical activity have been, they've been getting, aspects of their context and recent behavior. But they can also trigger surveys so that they're asked at the right times, in minimally burdened times. Now, beyond that, we have activities associated with time use uh, for, for indicating, act, uh, indicating different activities uh, over time, through the day, where they were held, with whom, et cetera. Um, and tracking expenses and custom interventions such as those associated with um, chatting, for example, uh, for particular participants. Now, activities can be started by participants um, via buttons, and different surveys might um, you might want to configure in addition to triggering, say, at certain times, triggered by context, triggered by time of day. Um, you might want to set up a button to trigger them, okay? Um, and uh, alternatively, um, beyond the buttons, uh, you can set them to trigger either at random times between different points or at fixed times. It's very common. They can be started by context, by, by proximity to beacons and GPS, as I had noted. Uh, and uh, as a result, they can be much more targeted and precise. Now, Ethica, for researchers, if we, if we think back to uh, how that survey completion and, and activities undertaken by a participant is reflected to researchers, within this researcher dashboard, for a given study that they've specified, they can monitor adherence in a, wish, in a rich way. And this allows them, amongst other things, to examine how many participants have answered certain surveys how consistent they have been in such answering, um, and under what conditions they are missing surveys, et cetera. Okay? So that's shown with these uh, colors here, and we'll see it in the interface later. But basically, we can monitor on a per participant basis, uh, or for participants more generally, uh, to what degree we are securing adherence from participants in a way that might, um, uh, might be supporting our study, or if there's evidence that we are, for example, um, uh, leading to survey fatigue. Data analysis is supported in its basics uh, by Ethica. We do a lot of analysis outside of Ethica. We do a lot of analysis in Ethica on a regular, on a routine sort of basis. Data analysis within Ethica um, uh, can be used for a number of different types of data. Some of them are built into the platform. For example, uh, location data up there, these heat maps of where people are spending their time or their trajectories and moving around a landscape. Those are captured automatically as a central part of Ethica. Um, by contrast, other types of data 
can be visualized using what's called the Kibana system, which we'll be exploring together uh, later in this session, okay? And you can create study custom visualizations which, which depict data in a way that you would find helpful as a researcher or which, um, uh, which other researchers or study administrators, or in some cases potentially participants, might find of help. Okay, um, and uh, some of those can make use of quite custom mechanisms such as uh, geographic visualization or network-based visualization or visualization over time, so, so uh, screen, screen time, for example. Okay, uh, so this is kind of timeline visualization. Um, Ethica puts a premium on providing a platform that's true to the four Vs. It's a platform that provides rich data that's big, but it's also high velocity data. It's high variety data. So from a given participant, we might be getting survey responses, aspects of their physical activity over time, who they're with, where they're located, um, and this sort of data can allow us to better tease out some of the factors affecting them, the way in which the context, the environment, builds environment, food environment, um, aspects of the uh, natural environment, such as uh, weather, might affect their behavior, for example. We can also look at their ideation. Some of the biggest power from Ethica comes from combining multiple types of data um, in a single analysis. Okay? So uh, rather than viewing these uh, solitudes, we often, we often investigate them um, in their combinations. And Ethica supports this in its basic interface. For example, um, in allowing us to look where people answered certain surveys, which gives some understanding of, for example, where they're reporting barriers to physical activity or where they uh, are engaged in carrot seeking or engaged in, um, in harmful self-behavior. Uh, and we can also, through uh, interfaces such as Kibana, we can easily map out, uh, for example, where people are engaged in physical activity over time, okay? Um, so uh, Ethica does um, uh, support a variety of um, of, of types of, of cross data. So I've just provided uh, a, a glimpse of the Ethica system, and uh, I will note um, that these slides are available to you uh, via a set of resources that I will now show, and a set of steps that you can undertake uh, now um, to, uh, to make use of the, um, the remaining time well, okay? So the materials, including these slides and many others, are provided at this uh, materials link. I will note that that includes uh, the slides. It includes some background materials, including citations to uh, articles that have made use of this sort of data. It also includes scripts for creating some sophisticated custom graphs within the, the uh, uh, related system to Kibana, Vega, um, and uh, some other, um, other components as well, such as uh, instructions on, on uh, modifying those scripts. Beyond that, I have created a YouTube playlist, okay? In this YouTube playlist, will have the videos from this session placed on it. So if you miss something, rest assured that the video should be up there, um, hopefully within the next day or so, okay? Um, that will let you uh, follow through uh, the contents. I would also ask you to undertake a couple steps right now which will put us in good stead for the balance of the session, for hands-on side of this session. Specifically, I'd ask that you go to this Ethica data um, uh, site, 
uh, accounts register. And I'd like you, if you're open to it, to sign up in two different ways. One of the ways is as a uh, researcher, okay? And uh, the researcher steps I would ask everyone to undertake. This is a step which allows us to browse the data collected by a study, okay? And, or to define a new study. And for that, I'd, I'd ask you to set it up with your work email. It'll be important to use different emails for these two tasks, okay? So if you could set that up with your work email, that will get us in good stead and, and make sure you remember which email you used. And so write it down if you need to so we can use it in just a few minutes. Secondly, if you're open to trying the app, bearing in mind you could uninstall it after the session, and bearing in mind downloading the app by itself actually doesn't collect data uh, right there for, for any ethic of studies. Um, uh, I would ask you to sign up as a participant. And for that, please use, I would suggest using your personal email, just so you keep them separate. They have to be two different emails. Um, one as a participant and one as a researcher, okay? Um, so uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, doing that, um, if you sign up on that page, that web page on ethicadata.com, that will put us in really good stead for quickly getting going with the app, okay? Um, and uh, with the app, what you can uh, do then is use it to, um, uh, to, to view the studies that we're going to be building, okay? So to get the app on your phone, what you would do is go to either the Apple Store or Google Play Store, whichever store is appropriate. If you have iOS, it's the Apple Store. If, it's, uh, if you have an Android, it will be the, the Play Store and you would search for Ethica Health, you download and install that. And the way it works is Ethica Health, if you just install it, you're not in any study, so you're not offering up uh, you know, health, health data there. On the other hand, if you, um, uh, if you opt into a study, that's when um, uh, it's at that point that uh, you'd be engaged in data collection. So I'd like you to, um, once you install Ethica, to sign into it using the one you, you entered as a participant. So this is the personal email password used above as a participant. And I'll, I'll just highlight that. So when I say personal, this is participant, okay? Uh, email. So uh, there we go, okay? Uh, so that would be this uh, email and password, okay? So once um, you install it and log in, um, it's only at that time that you'll be able to see the interface which we'll be walking through and that you'll have the option of opting into studies. Okay? Okay. So, um, are people done with that? Have you gotten through that yet? Or are you still working through it? Anyone need help? Oh, through through Wi-Fi. Um, so they actually gave a sheet, and it may be this. Is it this sheet here? Yeah, I just called these information for them, but then it's asking for a text message, but I don't have the signal here. Oh, okay. Uh, um, right. So, um, do you think if you went upstairs, it would send it to you? Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to do that for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why don't Why don't you go do that, and um, we'll uh, we'll we'll wait for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can leave your computer here if you want to. Um, it's just a text message. It will give you your password, and you could you could come down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll use this um, uh, use this time to to go and get the uh, Ethica app uh, up on the uh, the phone uh, here, uh, so we can we can walk through it. Okay, um, you can download from Play Store, or you can download from Apple Store. That's right. I am 
just going to call it up here on my phone. And there we go. Great. And I will switch over to this guy here. And 194, and there we go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Okay, so this is actually displaying my uh, my phone here, and if you uh, if you got the app on your phone, you should see here uh, an Ethica button. Now, your Ethica, um, are you able to get that? Yep. Okay, your Ethica interface will look a bit different than mine in its details, okay? Um, it, it'll look different because you're in a set of different studies than mine. I, I'm actually in a, a quite broad set of studies here, um, and you haven't joined the study um, likely yet, so um, uh, unless you were uh, quick on your fingers and, and, and joined the previous study. So uh, the Ethica app, um, is an app that uh, exists on Android and iOS. Um, and there's actually a web-based version that looks and feels like this that will be released uh, shortly. Um, but broadly, whatever studies uh, a person is in, they can be in more than one study at a time, um, uh, there's a set of settings that are relevant, okay? Um, uh, one of them, uh, has to do with joining a study, and we'll be using that uh, in a few minutes. That's this button up here, the plus button, okay? Um, and you'll notice there's another button called pause participation. And basically what that does is stop all data collection from those background sensors, so those um, data sources that are in the background that don't require participant involvement, things like app use, things like um, step counts, things like um, location, etc. Uh, there's also a settings button. I'll just highlight a couple things with settings. Um, there are uh, components that basically allow uh, restriction for a participant. There's a separate way to do it for study organizers to say essentially data for a study is to only be uploaded via Wi-Fi, or the participant can say, for me, I only want Wi-Fi uploads. This can prevent any worry about overage charges. Um, it can limit it um, from, from, so it doesn't go over my cell data connection. Um, and you can also say only restricted to upload while charging or rapid upload, which basically uploads as, as quickly as possible. Okay. And occasionally there's some interest in other studies. One thing I'll just note, at the bottom of this settings menu is actually an indication of your user ID. I don't know if you see that, but if you go to settings here in the app, so it's in that upper left corner, you go to settings, you'll see down at the bottom of that settings menu it says what, what the user ID is. This one is 2785, okay? Um, okay. Um, great. So you'll notice it also says sync data there. Ethica data is collected on the phone. It can be collected offline, does not require being on a network. Uh, but um, the data will, if you're offline, the data will accumulate on the phone. May accumulate for a few hours, may accumulate for a few days, a few weeks if needed. And on an episodic basis, when you come into contact with a, a network, uh, you can insist it's a Wi-Fi network only, or you can allow it, typically with, with both, uh, both cell data and Wi-Fi, it will upload the data uh, opportunistically. If in the middle of that, you know, you walk out of that hotspot, or whatever, it's no problem. It just gets as far as it can and, and stores up the data, it just batches it up until it can upload it, okay? So Ethica is a system that is, um, uh, is capable of, of operating offline, okay? Um, and um, as I said, 
you can have more than one uh, study in it. And for a given study, you can look at the information about the study, uh, look at the consent related information, the sponsors of the study. And um, you can have, for example, videos included that, that um, suggest uh, going to a certain place to learn more about a, uh, a particular study, okay? So this can be HTML information in which you can embed content that's multimedia and content. And, and content. Now, you may wonder, where does this information come from? And if you go look at my studies, um, I actually have um, quite, a, uh, quite a, a few of them here. Um, and uh, if there are any that were still operating, what you would find is um, that some of them uh, have rather different interfaces, some of different buttons. Where do those come from? Well, it comes from what the, per what the researcher sets up. So you may recall from earlier that the researcher establishes for a given study its characteristics, its buttons, its uh, data sources, its surveys, all those sort of things. So a study that uh, is operating in the COPD reported, uh, patient reported outcomes area um, uh, is, is, uh, will look different than a study in other areas, okay? Um, whoops. Um, so it looks like I, I stopped uh, broadcasting it. Here we go. Um, and, uh, and so what we're going to do now is to take a look at, um, at how, the, uh, how we set up these studies from a researcher perspective. How do we set up these sort of surveys? How do we set up the interface by which, um, uh, by which uh, you know, data sources are configured, okay? Um, so the Ethica app will be the point of participant contact with the system, whether it's web-based or on the phones. Uh, and indeed wearables provide another opportunity here, but the researcher will configure these items on a study by study specific basis to um, uh, to set the study up okay and we'll dive into how we do that is that okay okay so um i am going to then uh, stop broadcasting here and i am going to dive in to some hands-on components of this okay um and to that end i'm going to stop this video